So this is Vicky. She's showing up today for her third injection of a hyaluronic acid derivative into her knee. Um, we do these injections for a variety of syndromes. The most common one is just osteoarthritis. We oftentimes do steroid injections as well. Um, if we're doing steroid injections, we'll often do, do them for inflammatory conditions too, so you get them for rheumatoid arthritis or gout or pseudogout. This one of being osteoarthritis, she's had steroid injections before and they helped a little bit but came to a point where they weren't helping as much and now we're trying to re re replace the actual material that typically you would make to help cushion the knee. You can do these injections a variety of ways. The most common is the lateral retropatellar injection, which is the one we're going to be doing here. You see I've marked a spot on her knee. When you're trying to landmark this, you're going to look for the superior apex of the patella and the lateral border. It sort of forms a triangle and then at its apex, you, you inject horizontally and at, the, at a little bit medially and inferiorly into the knee when you're in that specific spot. And you can, you can usually blot the, knee, the patella and you'll be able to shift it open. You'll see when I actually do the injection, it'll raise the patella up and then we can inject underneath it. Now you can also inject anteriorly as well. We're not gonna do that this time and I can show you that another injection, but this is the spot we're gonna be looking at. So first of all, we're gonna use some chlorhexidine to clean the area. Typically, we prepare the area doing three outward circular rotations. The three aspect is just important because it gives it enough time to actually work. Um, and some studies will show that chlorhexidine with a little bit of alcohol is maybe mildly superior to providine, but the data is pretty weak on that aspect. If you do use providine, you should let it um, dry, and it's for the same purpose. The timing of it is what allows it to sort of exert its activity in the first place. So that's the third chlorhexidine, and this last one will be the alcohol. Now there are indications where I wouldn't inject it. If she had a localized infection, a uh, breakdown in the skin at the site of the injection, then I might transition from a lateral retropatellar to an anterior site, just because you don't want to convey any type of infection. If she had any type of active coagulopathy, so a blood problem, you wouldn't want to inject it either. If there was a possibility of a fracture, you'd be a little bit reticent as well. Um, and then the other issue is if she has a prosthetic knee in place, you have to question that, and usually I'll leave those to orthopedics. Now for the general residents who aren't, if you're not as comfortable with this, this step I would do for sure. Oftentimes I won't use any freezing because you're doing one single injection, but it's a good idea to do it just because if your position is off, you don't want to be messing around with the knee and then having the patient uncomfortable. So with that spot marked, I'm just going to have a little bit of a pick here, Victoria. I'm just going to feel a little poke. I'm just going to draw back a little bit. You okay? Mm -hmm. Just going to feel a little bit of freezing. Just going to draw back a little bit more. So this is just pure lidocaine. Um, when we're around joints, we don't use the epinephrine. Almost done there. You okay? Just like that. Now I would say in the history of doing injections, even though <clears throat> the data shows that the lateral retropatella is a little bit superior, I do find from a comfort perspective that the anterior injections are maybe tolerated a little bit better. So now I'm going to be injecting this with the bevel up. So you'll see it, I mean, my hand on the posterior aspect of the knee. I don't want to sort of mess with the site that I've, that I've put the anesthetic in. I'm just going to put a little gentle pressure so I can tilt the kneecap up. So put this in horizontally. Just poke. A little bit meaty, a little bit inferiorly. A little pressure there. And that goes in smoothly, so she's in the joint space. I just want to draw back to make sure I'm not in the vessel and she's nice and clear. And I'm just going to inject this slowly and feel some pressure. Now, in this case, I'm using a 27 gauge needle, so you may see it shake a little bit because that forces me to use a little bit more pressure. Usually, a 25 gauge or a, even a 22 gauge is easier. Um, Sometimes a bit harder for the patient, obviously. But this will still go in nicely. But it does require a lot of pressure. So if you're only using one hand, like one, I have two hands on this. And that's all the way in. I'm just going to pop this out. Just like that. And I'll just put a band-aid on that and she's all done.